Hey there, I'm Miles. This is episode two of my Bumblebee, or Building the Bee costume, where I go over how to do this chest armor and this arm piece. Last time you saw them, they were in a really boring and blank state, looking all gray. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly the steps I wanna do to paint them to look like this, and the steps we're gonna be taking to make everything else look really cool. I hope you stick around. So the first step we're going to do to this actual armor before we get into painting it is we're going to make sure the surface is paintable. I know just from experience of painting things before, based on this plastic I can tell that if I put this spray paint on it, it will not stick very well. It will slip off, it won't adhere, it won't cure properly. So a way to get around doing this is with sandpaper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some sandpaper, run it over the entirety of the thing, not just the pieces I'm gonna paint, just the entirety of it, the front and the back, just so we have a good base, and also to get rid of this um, nice sheen, because like I said, we're going for a dirty look. So, first step is to take some sandpaper, just some rough bit sandpaper, and go over the whole thing. So looking at the difference now, I've sanded this side and not this side. You can see how it's very coarse and very rough, and that's exactly what we want. We want to bring up this material, we want to get rid of this nice finish and bring out more of a coarse, uh, a coarse finish. So if it looks like this, you're in the right direction. It might look a little crappy now, but trust the process on this one. Okay, so now that we have that all sanded down, you can clearly see it looks a lot different than it did before. The reason for that is because now that we've brought up all this texture, um, it's a much more coarse, rough surface that we can now apply our paint to. However, as we can see, this is much more gray than it is black. I want it to be black, but I needed to sand it to get the paint to adhere the right way. So the first step I'm gonna do is instead of going right to the yellow, I'm gonna take one step back and I'm going to paint it black. I know that might seem like I just wasted a step to sand it all and then paint it black again, but trust me, it's, it's all trusting the process. Painting it black after getting this nice uh, rough surface is going to be worth it in the end. So painting it black and then going in with the yellow is going to be much better than just doing yellow on top of this. Like I said, now that we have this thing outside hung up, I'm gonna hit it with some Rust-Oleum black, flat black, um, the normal curing time for this is after you paint it, it's going to cure for about an hour, but it is very hot outside. It is almost 100 degrees. It's reaching 90, so we could probably half that time. So the second I put that paint on, it'll probably be touch dry in about 20, 25 minutes. I'm still going to give it about an hour or two to cure just to make sure that it's cured in all the way. Keep it about maybe a foot, foot and a half away just so you're not bu bubbling up that paint and you should get a nice even uh, texture. Quick side tip for painting, I painted the two sides here. Make sure that you are constantly moving the can back and forth in even strokes and you're not holding it down. You're doing nice little bursts like that to get a nice even coverage. To ensure that you're not um, bubbling in any areas, layering up too thick, and to make sure it all goes on in a very nice uniform way. And you can already see the difference here. Hopefully the lighting is working. Um, it's a, already a beautiful flat black color. I'm not worried about it hitting this foam here because I know it'll absorb in. I'll have to tape that off for the yellow, but for the black, I'm not worried about it. So I did want to take one quick second to show you something. I said before how it was incredibly hot outside, so it would be touch dry. I mean, that's right, this is already sprayed. It's touch dry, it's not gonna come off, right? However, just because it's touch dry, does not mean it's ready to be painted on again or taped and i want to show you this if you see right here right there this is the black paint we just put on i put tape over it and then quickly ripped it off just to see what would happen and you can see underneath the material shows so it ripped my paint off so even though it is touch dry and nothing's happening you can still rip it off if you don't let it cure all the way so regardless of if it's touch dry or how hot it is outside please let your paint cure all the way, no matter what material you're using, so you don't inhibit your results. 
it's always worth it to be a little bit patient to let it dry in the end and so you don't have to redo steps i'm okay with this being like this because it's going to be dirty anyway but i needed to show you as an example so you could clearly see what happens if something is not cured and you try to tape over it or paint over it again i know you're probably thinking when the hell did he do all of that that is looking really different don't worry i'm going to explain all of it right now so i was looking at the chest armor and the back armor trying to think of how i wanted to paint the yellow on there using the spray paint i had two options i could either hand paint it on so the second option was to spray it on which meant unfortunately i had to tape off everything that i wanted to keep black so i was on the fence about the actual design of what I wanted to keep black and what I wanted to make yellow. Uh, one of the good things about this sports armor, like I've said before, it's a cheat code for cosplayers. One of the good things is it's very forgiving with paint. So if you mess up, you tape something the wrong way, you paint something the wrong color, all you really need to do is just sand off that paint, reprime it and paint it over it again. I've done it a million times to a million different armors. This just happens to be a new piece of armor. So it's very forgiving. So I realized if I don't like the way the yellow looks, and I think it's too strong or needs to be a different color or needs to be more black, I can easily paint over it. But you also want to take your time and make sure you're taping everything the right way because it'll just save you some time in the end if you focus more on your design at the beginning. So the same kind of process so as here, kind of see here up, you can see uh, how it is now very, the very, very, the yellow like color. Coloring. Very, very yellow. Um, I did get some of the yellow on the strapping here, which shouldn't be a problem. I should be able to get that black again. So I should have said this before, but the same kind of paint we're using is the 2x rust-oleum this one is golden sunset to paint the entire thing same kind of process as before is you want to keep the can a good distance away keep it consistently moving and not get too close i actually have an example here if you can see right in there focus right on that corner there i got a little too close and it started bubbling up so i'm gonna have to get that with another pass later but the rest of it looks fairly good for a first coat i kept the coat uh relatively light to show some of the black through because we're going to sand it down again. So now that I've taken all the paint off, you can see this nice black and yellow color scheme. It turned out even better than I thought it would with how good that golden yellow actually adhered to the plastic. I'm glad I did the black underneath because it gave it something to grab onto. And I'm going to start sanding away some of this to make it look more scuffed, more damaged, and more battle-worn. And I've done a little on the back already. You can see to this, uh, this one strip is my test strip to see since it's in the back. So my one test strip to do some sanding to take some of the paint off. And it does two things. Um, firstly, it actually ingrains the paint in there. So you can see how this looks like another layer. It pushes it, the yellow paint into the black. And number two, it makes it look a lot less glossy, more matte, and it looks a lot more battle-worn. So that's what we're going to do for this next step.
I am very, very happy with how it's looking so far. You can see I did it on the arm here too. Taking away that um, uniform yellow look and giving us this more scuffed, battle damaged look to this yellow. I really, really like it because it gives you more the idea that it's paint that is worn off. The next step we're gonna do is we're gonna take some silver paint and we're going to dry brush all over both pieces to create a metallic under effect. This will give the effect that this material is metal, that it's an automobile part just like Bumblebee and the armor itself is not plastic like this. It'll give the effect that it's actually metal. Essentially, it's you take a brush with some paint, flick it off till it's touch dry and you go over each and every raised edge. So as we can see right here, we have the armor fully painted with the scuff marks sandpapered away and this new dry brushing that we just did to show the exposed metal parts underneath. We did the same thing with the arm brace as well. The same exact process used on the chest piece we applied to the arm brace itself as well. And I do have to say, I'm very happy with how that turned out. Now we're gonna move on to our next step, which is installing LED lights into this chest piece and seeing where it looks from there. So I just got these LEDs in from the mail. They actually just came in today. I didn't think I'd get them until tomorrow. So I can throw the LEDs on and show you the final reveal of what this is looking like. So I got two different pairs. I'll leave the link in the description for the seller I got them from. But I got one blue, one yellow. The blue I got because I know Bumblebee's eyes turn blue. So I figured it'd be a cool idea to have some blue lights somewhere else, either in the armor or the eyes. I might get another pair, whatever. And the yellow I got, obviously, because Bumblebee, his color's yellow. But my concern is I want them to go in here, and they'd have to wire through the back and stick out through here. But my concern is, you see how it's just an LED poking out? I might have to put something in this little triangle to almost diffuse the light in a way to make this all illuminate. I don't know what I'm going to do for that. I'm going to have to do a little bit of... Uh, trial and error but for the sake of this video I'm gonna quickly tape in these LEDs and turn them on and try this on just to show you what it's looking like. 